The next thing I want to configure for this site is the header. So I'm in the customizer. I'm going to go to header. And you can see we have our header builder down here at the bottom and our available items over here. So I actually like the general layout of the header as it is, but I am gonna make some modifications. So for example, I do want to select a logo. So I've created a very simple logo for this site. I'm gonna drag in and upload. We'll select it. It's gonna ask me to crop it, but I'm gonna skip the cropping because it's already the perfect size. And once that's done, the logo appears here. We do not need the site title to display right next to the logo. So I'm gonna change that setting to logo only. So now we've got the logo on this side, we've got the menu on this side. That is the layout I want. Now we just have to configure the menu. So I'm gonna go down to the primary navigation menu here. Click the settings icon. So I'm gonna create an actual menu and customize these items a little bit. But first I wanna customize the design. So for the colors, I think I'm gonna use this option. And then, let's see, that's our hover color and our active color. I think I'm gonna do purple, just the main accent color for both of those. We don't need a background. And for the font, I think I'm gonna increase the font weight a little bit, and then we'll check the size. I think 17 pixels is gonna be fine for this menu. Double check the dropdown options here. Um, I think it would be more helpful to actually come back to this when we have a dropdown. So we'll go back to the primary navigation, go to general, and then we'll select the menu. So I haven't created any menus on this site yet. So I'll create a new menu and I'll just call it primary. Now let's add some items to this menu. So we can do home, which is a custom link just to the home page of this website. And then maybe we do some categories. You can see I've created some tech related categories here. So let's do news, apps, gadgets, gaming, and social media. Let's see how that looks. Looks good to me. And actually, I think I'm going to add for the purposes of having a drop down. We'll add about us, drag that up and make it the second option. Change the navigation label, simplify it a little bit, just about. And then I'm actually going to add that same page again as a sub menu under about. We'll call it about tech blog. And then you can add contact and our privacy policy, all as sub menus of the about link. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's go back, back to the header back to primary navigation settings, drop down options. I think I'm gonna do fade up versus fade or fade down. I kind of like fade up. So that works for me. And for the design, that color is fine there, but I want to add some purple. So we're going to use that first accent color for both the hover background and the active background. So that's what that's going to look like. 
Now I'm noticing this text is a little bit small, so I'm gonna increase that a little bit. Let's try maybe 16. Maybe 15. That looks good to me. So I like that. Happy with the drop down. And just to make things interesting, we're going to say that this tech blog has some sort of membership component to it. Like maybe there's a, a premium version of it for, you know, more in-depth content or something like that. So we're going to put a sign in button over here on the other side of the primary navigation. So we'll configure this, we'll call it sign in. And for now, I'm not going to worry about sending it to a login page or anything. I'm just going to put a placeholder in the URL. But just for the sake of design, I want to have that there. Now that button is fine, but we could make it a little more interesting. Uh, and I think to do that, I'm actually going to go over to the global button settings. That way this change will be reflected on all the buttons that we create and not just this one. So under colors and fonts, I'm going to go to buttons and we have our background colors here. Now these are our global colors that we set from the uh, color palette. But I want to make this a little more interesting. I'm going to do a gradient similar to the gradient in the logo here. So I've got these colors saved off screen and I'm just going to insert these. So for this first color, I'm going to use the, the purple from our theme and we're going to fade that into sort of orange color. And you can see this creates a whole different design that is a lot more visually interesting. So for our angle here, let's see. Let's do something like that for the angle on the initial color. And then on our hover color, we're going to do something similar. Same sort of gradient, but here we're using a different angle. So we'll leave this at 135. And we should see the difference when we hover over the button. So same colors, just a different angle for the gradient. So it's a very subtle hover effect. Now I also want to change the shape of this button. I'm not loving the rectangular square corners. So I'm going to bring the border radius up to round off those corners. And I'm not sure why that's not taking effect. Let's go back to the header. Let's see if I've set something by accident on that button. Just go ahead and set it to 100 pixels. Um, but yeah, that's our, that's our button. I think that looks a lot better than it did before. Uh, and it's just, like I said, visually interesting. And it matches our brand, as you can tell from the simple logo I created with the gradient effect, the button matches really well. So returning to the header, we've got our logo, we've got our primary navigation, we've got our button. It looks pretty good, but we can also add other elements. So you remember there's three rows here. We have a top row, a main row, and a bottom row. On a lot of websites, you only use the main row because that's all you need. Um, and we could get away with that here, but just to make things a little more interesting, I am going to do something with the top row. So let's see what we can do here. Let's go with HTML. And I'm going to put some contact information up here. So we'll say, got a news tip. then we'll add an email address. So techblog at email.com. Now, if we have this over here, of course, we're going to need something on the other side to make it symmetrical. So I am going to add social media buttons and search. So we've got our social media buttons and our search icon there. 
And what I want you to notice here is very rarely do these things look perfect when you first add them. So the icons here look a little awkward. The top bar being the same color as the main header bar looks a little awkward. But as we start to configure all of this, it's gonna look a lot better. So what I'd like to do first is configure this top row. So I can click this little settings icon next to the top row itself. And we'll go to design. Now here I wanna change the background. We'll change the background to, I believe this is what we're using for the page background color. Yeah. Yeah, so that looks good. Instantly looks a lot better. Uh, we still have a couple of modifications we could make here. I think this text is too big and these icons need to be changed. But before we do that, I also wanna add some padding. So we're gonna add padding to the top and bottom to give these elements a little bit of breathing room because they're kind of right up against the top and bottom of this bar. So if we add maybe, we'll start with five pixels on the top. So the, the, first, um, the first box here is for the top, the third box is gonna be for the bottom. So we'll add five pixels there as well. And I think that's sufficient. So that looks good in terms of the layout of the top bar. And now we can go and customize these individual elements. So we'll go to the HTML. And what I wanna do here is change the text size. So we'll reduce it to maybe 15. I think 15 is good. And then We'll go over to the social media. And here I wanna change the style of these icons. So we're gonna switch from filled to outline. Once again, major improvement, looks a lot better. The other thing I wanna edit here is the colors. So we'll set the initial color to this darker color here. And then I think I'm gonna go with purple for the hover color, just to sort of match the menu and everything else here. You can see that looks very nice. Now I wanna do the same thing for my search icon. So I'm gonna edit that. And you can choose which icon you want. It's a very subtle difference, but I'm gonna go with this one. And then for the design, for the initial color, I'm gonna go with the darker color so it matches the social icons. And then we've already got the correct hover color there. So that's our top row for the header. Looks very good. We've got our main row configured as well. And after just a few minutes, the site is really coming together and you can start to envision what the final product is gonna look like. So I think that does it for the desktop header, but I do wanna make sure that the tablet and mobile header looks okay. So here it's a lot simpler. We've got our logo over here and our trigger icon on this side. So let's go ahead and edit the trigger. See what that looks like. I like the more bold icon myself, so I'm gonna go with that. We'll go to design and make sure this color matches the brand identity. We can go with default or bordered. I prefer the default look. And then we can edit our mobile navigation. So that is gonna be this. Same thing here. I just wanna make sure that it matches the overall brand identity. So I'm happy with the colors here. I think I might do the same thing with the font here, make it a little more bold, and then bring up the font size a little bit. So that's our mobile menu. Uh, we can go over to general and make sure the proper menu is selected. So I'm just gonna reuse the same menu on mobile. And there it is, we are good to go. So I think that will do it for our header.
Thanks for checking out this video. As I mentioned at the top, this video is part of my WordPress masterclass, which I've designed to be the definitive beginner's guide to building beautiful, functional websites with WordPress. It's a comprehensive step-by-step -step course, and the goal is to get you to a level of proficiency where you feel comfortable building pretty much any type of website, from a simple blog to a complex e-commerce store, all without writing a single line of code. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more WordPress content.